We do have some discussion of aqua later on in our agenda. Thank you. Uh, as a matter of fact, a couple of things right after that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Courtney, I'm, um, oh, I'm sorry. Is there, I'm sorry. Is there anyone else who would like to speak as part of public comment? Is there anyone else who would like to speak as part of public comment? Is there anyone else hearing no one else? We'll close public comment. Um, now, for the program that Ms. Courtney uh, talked about, it sounds like a great program. I'm just trying to figure out how to, what department to attach it to, like social services or something like that. Mr. Chairman, I talked to Ms. Courtney uh, last week and encouraged her to come before the board and, and discuss the program. And I think we should, I told uh, Mr. Seeley, of course, as our representative on the social services board, and that uh, we would certainly want to hear what she had to say and discuss the program and probably um, in some way have social services involved in this program as well. I think that's what you should do. I, I was going to say, can I calendar. take it to the social services board? We meet next week. What day and next then, week? You mean Tuesday, the 22nd? I think we meet I mean the Wednesday. Wednesday the 22nd? I believe that's the date. I don't have my calendar in front of me. But I need to look at see where it's oh. written down at because I don't remember. Okay. We are meeting. We I think we Third moved Wednesday. off of Wednesdays. It may be, it may be Tuesday. I just... But her, your program for the 23rd is pretty much set up at the days in already, right? Um, yes, yeah, basically. Okay. And, of course, it costs the county nothing to yeah. put your monthly meeting on our website and make it part of the county, uh, county calendar. We'd be happy to do that. Uh, what time? Well, we don't um, set it for 6 to 7. Okay. October 23rd from 6 to 7. Um, so that meeting will be able to take place at day's end due to private. That will allow Mr. Seeley a chance to take it to the board, see if social services can absorb this program. I'm sure there's a couple of hundred dollars in their budget as, as she requested to take care of it. I'll talk to him. Sound good? Okay. So we're going to move it forward. We're going to put you on the county calendar, and we're going to try to tie you into social services. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then we are going to address Mrs. Kennedy in uh, a couple of agenda items when we talk about Aqua. All right, now we'll move to public hearing. Our only public hearing for the night is the proposed franchise agreement with Comcast of Virginia. As uh, board members are aware, this is the cable franchise company that has the western part of the county. And uh, we have the franchise agreement. I just need to open the public hearing, which it looks like there's going to be a lot of people who want to talk about it. So we will declare the public hearing for the Comcast franchise agreement to be opened. Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this matter? Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this matter? Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this matter? Hearing none, the public hearing is declared closed. Mr. Black or Mr. Akers, you're the Comcast uh, areas. What do you have to say about this? Well, uh, we certainly have been uh, had this franchise agreement uh, circulating for. 10 years? <laughs> yeah. uh, 15. <laughs> well, 15 years, so it's time we, uh, we do something with it. I think we went over it pretty well. Uh, I think uh, Ann Neal has, has done a good job in putting this, to, putting this agreement together. I have no issues. Uh, I think we were able to get them in order to uh, uh, telecast, broadcast the board meetings in the western side of the county, which has been uh, lacking for the last probably 10 years or, or close to it. So... Uh, I have no issues with the franchise agreement uh, at this point. No issues? No issues whatsoever. Motions in order? We, we need a motion to approve. I'll make a motion that we approve the franchise agreement uh, with Comcast of Virginia uh, as presented. Second. Motion made by Mr. Akers, seconded by Mr. Black to approve the 
Comcast uh, franchise agreement with the county. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay. Mr. Akers is going to be right back. Um, we're going to move on while you're gone. Um, at this point, we'll go to agenda item number five, which is a continued discussion of potential application for fiscal year 2016 Virginia Department of Transportation revenue sharing program. Mr. Wilson. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this is your continuing discussion of the uh, matching road fund uh, uh, potential for fiscal year 2016. The uh, department has been meeting with VDOT a number of times and recommends to the board that uh, we participate in the matching road fund project in the uh, Route 639 corridor off of Interchange 110 uh, to the sum not to exceed $2.5 million. Um, and your approval would be required. All right. I don't think I have. Um, I was trying to pull up the project itself. I don't think I have any questions. Any other board member have any questions? Um, Mr. Fincham, are you coming to help or are you going somewhere else? Um, I was just going to address one point of clarification. As the board is aware, there is another prospect that we have been discussing potential revenue sharing. In talking to Mr. Nelson, an application actually requires a res an adopted resolution from the Board of Supervisors, which if that project were to materialize between tonight and the end of the month, we could not get that into the revenue sharing queue for this year. Without the resolution? Without the resolution. Okay. Understanding that it does not obligate us to spend any of those funds, in addition to the uh, number requested by um, Mr. Wilson, the board could consider actually a higher number for the second revenue sharing project. And if it fails to materialize, it does not count against us. Okay. Just to protect your interest in that project, if you so desire. And I think Mr. Nelson could address that in a little more detail if you have any questions. Other localities have done similar. Done the same thing. I just, Mr. Nelson, you don't have to come forward. If you, if you could just nod your head, VDOT would be agreeable to something like that as long as we got it in before the 31st? Okay. Mr. Nelson nods his head and says yes. So, okay. I think that's what, what we needed. Um, and, Mr. Wilson, you would confer with that? Yes, sir. Um, we didn't have a number for the other project. Because I think we have to have a we have to have a number, actually for the resolution. I think the total number would be three point four two five million dollars. For the other project. Well, altogether, it'd be three point four two five. This project would be nine hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. We'd be asking you to go in revenue sharing, which would be a total of one point eight total. Okay. So, an additional nine hundred twenty-five thousand dollars over what Mr. Wilson has requested. The two point five he's talking about. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's it for the information. Logistically, yes, we need a. Any questions about the potential revenue sharing projects? No. Okay. Um, we are going to vote on that, and whoever makes the motion, I would ask them to make the motion to approve it as stated, give staff the ability to create the resolution, and give the chair the ability to sign the resolution to go to VDOT before October 31st. So is there a motion regarding the revenue sharing applications that we've heard about to move forward? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we do a, a revenue sharing um, recommendation of $3.425 million uh, with a resolution to be signed by the chairman for the 2016 revenue sharing um, issue uh, and needs to be in by October 31st. That's good. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion's made by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Black. Discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 
All opposed, nay. The motion carries unanimously. And um, staff will get all the details and let me know, and I'll come by and sign it, or, and, and we'll go from there. Okay, agenda item number six is the uh, proposed, thank you, Mr. Nelson, is a proposed discussion on the, uh, or the proposed county participation in the opposition to Aqua Virginia's rate increase and the surcharge proposal before the SEC. And Mr. Black, I think you had a statement you wanted to say. Mr. Mr. Chairman, we have a, uh, just to, I, I guess Ms. Cosby's here, uh, just to clarify a couple of things. There's actually two um, cases that are going on right now in front of the oh. SEC. Um, we have, there's resolutions um, that were prepared um, by the uh, Sands Anderson in regards to this. Um, as Ms. Kennedy uh, had mentioned earlier, the first one is actually a rate case, um, which uh, if you guys are unaware of, it's an average of 9 or 10 percent um, in Virginia um, for the uh, increase for Aqua Virginia. In places like Lake Heritage um, and Lake Landor, it's 15 percent on water, 4 to 5 percent, roughly 15 percent on water, 4 to 5 percent on sewer. So that's where you get your average. Um, that's a typical, that's something typical that Aqua has done in the past. It seems to happen every two to three years that they ask for a rate increase. Um, there was actually, um, and I will send it to Mr. Cully so all of you can have the information. Um, uh, there was actually a PowerPoint that we did kind of going over the costs. Some of the rates have gone up on water and sewer. Some of them have gone up 200% on water, 300 plus percent on sewer uh, rates over uh, since they've, the 2008. Um, the second case is the one that we're um, also very concerned about. Um, it would be a surcharge um, that they could put into the bills. Um, and there is a resolution in here um, that Ms. Cosby has worked on, um, as well as um, you know myself. We've looked at this a little bit um, regarding that is the one that's kind of more dangerous because there's a fear that with a surcharge, um, Aqua could actually kind of double charge its, its, uh, its citizens. Uh, as of right now, and Ms. Cosby can add, uh, add stuff to this, um, anytime Aqua goes for a rate increase, there needs to be a public hearing um, on that rate increase. It appears um, the, the question in front on the surcharge is more of a legal question on um, whether the State Corporation Commission has the authority to give a private company the ability to um, I mean basically to, to, to initiate a um, a surcharge if the State Corporation Commission has that authority outside of the General Assembly. Um, and so that's kind, of a, um, that's kind of a big issue. And then if they do, there seems to be the wording that they've put in to the State Corporation Commission is it doesn't seem that they need um, a, or, uh, a public hearing to increase that surcharge like they would do the regular rates. Um, so we have, some, we have some, you know, obviously some major concerns regarding this, this surcharge. Um, their argument is it's to pay for infrastructure and they won't have to go with rate increases as, as often. Um, that's the idea. I'm not sure that um, the citizens of uh, Lake Landor would agree with that. Um, so I guess that's, Ms. Cosby, if you could, I mean, if there's anything that you would like to add to that. I, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, we'll just kind of give them some background. So we have a resolution in front of you um, that we would like the county to adopt. Um, and I think we also need to look at participating um, in both the rate case, because there's two different cases here, um, which is typical um, that we have done in the past, as well as the uh, surcharge case. File comments in the surcharge case. Okay. Um, I would just, um, I think Mr. Black has accurately described both cases. The rate increase case is one that's similar. And the county has participated in the past where we filed a notice of participation, um, appeared before the State Corporation Commission. I then believe Mr. Akers had, had come or um, made a statement that was presented to the SEC. Um, in those cases, we haven't generally participated for the full hearing, um, but we have made the county's concerns known to the State Corporation Commission as to the effect on customers. The second case that Mr. Black had discussed was this proposed rulemaking, which essentially asks, and it's Aqua and other companies, where they've asked that the State Corporation Commission consider adopting a rule 
that would set up a procedure where companies could come to the SEC and ask for um, approval of a plan that identifies particular infrastructure that needs to be um, that needs to be improved and the plan identifies that infrastructure and how it would be paid for essentially by the customers in that territory that in that service area and that's a rider to the plan so they come in with their plan and their rider and then the SEC would hold a public hearing on that first plan and rider um, and then would if it was found to be um, prudent and reasonable uh, could approve that plan and then the utility company would be able to thereafter um, impose that surcharge and then annually it would be adjusted I think we talked about like a checkbook you know at the end of the year and so um, the rider the the rate would be could be adjusted up or down but that would only need SEC administrative approval so once it's approved it can go up or down it could go up and the company would just need to go to the SEC and get administrative approval there wouldn't be the second public hearing so in the resolution um, that is before you, um, in that rulemaking case, there's the opportunity for the county and any other participant to file comments um, on the request for the rulemaking. Uh, there's also an opportunity to request a hearing on any issue uh, if the county believes that a hearing is necessary. Um, and as Mr. Black mentioned, in this particular case, there are two legal issues that the SEC has directed. Anybody who wants to participate um, in this case must, must answer two questions, um, and they're primarily legal questions. The first is whether the SEC even has the authority under the current enabling legislation in the Code of Virginia to allow it to adopt the rule and the procedure that's being proposed. And if it does, then should it do so without um, an express directive from the General Assembly? Anybody wishing to file comments or a notice of or a, re um, a request for a hearing has to answer those two essentially legal questions, which does make this somewhat different than what we've done before. Because in order to do that, you know, that issue needs to be addressed by an attorney, and so that would be part of the filing of these comments. Um, the resolution before you essentially what directs um, it, it finds that the petition for rulemaking is not in the best interest of the residents of the county and it's unfair and unjust and potentially unauthorized but it directs the the county attorney to file comments in the proceeding um, pending before the State Corporation Commission consistent with these three criteria which are that any rider approved by the SEC would ensure that affected customers pay aqua no more than they would um, if for the surcharge than they would for a rate case in other words typically you know they get reimbursed through the rate case if you're going to do a surcharge make sure that the customer is not going to be paying any more that it's all equivalent so regardless of the mechanism the customer doesn't uh, pay any more that's one request the second is that the rider any subsequent approval of the rider that increases the rate must be done through um, have a public participation option and that the plan and rider could only be approved if also shown to be in the best interest of the customer so that would be the consistency those would be the comments that our office would be filing on behalf of the county we'd also have to address those legal issues um, I um, as far as a hearing um, I think that the option of requesting a hearing could be included in that but that might not be something that would be necessary um, I would note in some of these cases it's generally good in the past we've talked about having um, an expert um, to assist the county you know I have talked to somebody and I've spoken to, to staff and mr. black about you know we have the potential to have an expert assist us if that's something that the board you know would want to do at some amount um, I believe the rates reasonable but again that's something for the you know for the board mm -hmm. just to have that extra resource available um, but uh, so the so that's generally the resolution and, and what assistance we could offer we have the resolution um, before us and the, the resolution one's old one's new. No, there, there are two. 
I got old. Once for the rate case and once for the rulemaking. So it should have been first and second. Okay. Old is first, new is second. Okay. So we have two two resolutions in front of us. Um, thirty, I guess thirty two and thirty three. And the estimate of county cost is thirty to sixty thousand dollars. For both cases. The estimated cost. I'm just reading what you have here. The estimated cost for both the expert and attorney fees for the rate increase aspect alone is anywhere from 30 to 60. So that's only the rate increase. That is correct. If with an expert. That's for the rate making. That's for the 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 30 to 60 thousand. It would be for the rate case. I don't think I'm right. Yet. Not Probably for the rate case. I, I you know we in in my experience in the past is um, when I was on the board in Lake Landor, we had actually spent the $60,000 on an expert. Um, and as far as the rate case, um, and it, it, we, didn't, we didn't get very far with, with the expert at $60,000. I think the bigger concern, um, and I do think we need to file, the thirty to 60000 costs you, the reason why that's so expensive in the rate case is because you have to hire an expert. Um, they're looking at numbers, they're number crunching. The experts, that they're, they're hiring in a rate case here, you're hiring someone to go behind the SEC. Why? And, and it's basically someone crunching numbers from that perspective. Mm -hmm. I, I think the since we have two cases here, I do think that we need to file um, that we are opposed to the rate. Uh, I don't think there's any question that is opposed to the rate. It's the question of is there on the, the what you get back in return for spending sixty thousand um, dollars. You know, generally in the past, uh, when entities is from from going down. Mr. Akers probably could verify this as well. From going down, when entities in the past have indeed spent that money, um, you know, Ms. Kennedy's in the audience as well, um, there's not been a lot of um, return on that investment. I think if we're going to spend money on a case, the case that we would spend, we would spend money on would be the surcharge, uh, the surcharge case, um, allowing, them to do a, allowing them to do a surcharge. If we were to pump, uh, put money into it, that would be the legal case, um, simply because that's more of a, um, they, the question is whether they have the legal authority to do it at the beginning. But the rule case, is going to be an, an additional amount <coughs> above and beyond this thirty to sixty thousand that's in the memo. No, no. no well, I mean, what, no. You're saying the two together. No, no. The, all the, all the, I want to know is how much it's going to cost. Estimate. We're not recommending doing the thirty or sixty for the rate case. So we we just want to file a petition to get you know, notice to get in the rate case okay. and, and give you a chance to make comments and 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 that type of thing, but not hire an expert and spend thirty to sixty on the rate case. In talking to the expert, he said the best you can probably hope for would be a one percent to two percent reduction in the rate, and it's probably not worth the county spending sixty grand for that little bit of reduction in, in the rate. We believe the money would be better spent on the surcharge case, the rule making, the rule -making case. case. But I don't know that it's thirty thousand. I don't know that we really have. We think we ought to put the uh, consultant on retainer, and it would have to do some legal briefing. Uh, it would be some legal work, but I, I, I don't want to put yeah, words gonna, in their mouth. Play, but, mm -hmm. So we're going to pay legal fees regardless. But the first point is, I think we all agree that, that we would file um, and submit at least two resolutions opposing the rate increase right. and a resolution opposing the rulemaking case. Right. Then you'll get us some sort of estimate of how much it will cost, legal fees, ballpark it. Okay, so we can understand what kind of investment we're making to fight this case with the SEC, which may or may not be successful. They're, they're rarely successful, period. But uh, And I think we have a much better chance because it's more of a legal question on the rulemaking case. The other thing, too, that we can yeah. do, um, that we can do um, with this case is when you go to a rate-making case, it's my understanding, and, and Ms. Cosby, you can correct me if I'm wrong, they have different tiers on the rate-making case. So you have like water tier one, water tier two, water tier three, sewer tier one, sewer tier two. They've been narrowing them down. They used to have five different categories. They're down to, I think, about three on the rate. On the, on the rule-making case, everyone across the state would be under the same surcharge. So um, if we were able to maybe, I don't know if that's possible, we talked about sending this resolution to other counties that are serviced by Aqua with a letter from the county saying, hey, look, just, I mean, I'm sure they're aware of it, but the comments have to be in by November 7th, 7th on this case, on the, on the rulemaking case. So 
You want um, to make a motion to adopt the two resolutions, and we'll get them in right now. Okay. Sounds good. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make the – do we need a separate motion for each one? or? Yeah. Okay. R32. R30, R30, R30 and I do not we're going to assume R30. this one is R33. R, R, where is the R thirty two fourteen and R thirty three fourteen. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to uh, to adopt resolution R thirty two fourteen. Second. All in favor say oh. Motion made by Mr. Black, seconded by Mr. Akers. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. The motion carries unanimously. Mr. Black. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt resolution R thirty three fourteen. Second. Motion made by Mr. Black, seconded by Mr. Akers. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The motion carries unanimously. So we're going to move those two forward. And, of course, we can, uh, we can post these on the county website. County, county opposes aqua increase, and that way anybody else involved can, can get it off our website. Yeah. And Ms. Yeah. Or, if you'd like, send you can it. be proactive and send it to people. Yes, we, 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 we plan on doing that. So we can do that. Also send this to... All our House of Delegate members and our state senator. We can mail it to anybody <coughs> we want. And that was a question I was going to, to ask. And, uh, if they do not have the authority, if it's determined they do not have the, the ability to say Corporation Commission in order to make these uh, rule changes, they would have to get it through the General Assembly. Right. Uh, so we need to, and I think... Okay, we, we need to start that process right now and getting someone on board uh, in the Senate as well as the, the House that's going to support uh, not allowing them to have this authority so we can block it. Now, to be honest with you, if you stop and look at surcharges on his face, it may not sound like a bad idea, but if it was a company that we could deal with and we felt confident with, uh, I don't know that we would have as much opposition to it, or I wouldn't have as much opposition to it. Uh, because... You know, I think this board in, in the past has taken the position, you know, if you use it, you pay for it uh, type of uh, approach. And the same thing I think applies in, in, uh, with these surcharges. If you have improvements to your system, then the people have to pay for it. Uh, if you don't have uh, services or increases or improvements to your, to your facilities, then you shouldn't have to pay for someone else's. And I think that's what's happening in the rate increases they are now asking for statewide. Uh, for instance, they may be wanting Lake Landau to help pay for Lake Caroline's uh, improvements. So uh, I think just basic okay. rates is, is not right. Uh, We're going to move, yeah, and, and I, I think we need to do that. My thought was, if, does the Dillon rule work both ways? Because if we're a Dillon rule state, the SCC doesn't have explicit permission from the General Assembly. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV, but it yeah. sure sounds logical. <laughs> yeah, I'm not it's sure. a similar concept. It's not Dillon rule, but it's statutory authority, and that's exactly the, it's exactly the same concept. Okay. All right. So that's, that's what we're going to have them look at. We're going to move forward. Uh, Mr. Black, I understand you did a great, great job at, at your uh, constituent meeting, too. So we're going to move forward. Mrs. Kennedy, just to let you know, I gave the resolution back, but it did mention all of the other Loca uh, subdivisions that had aqua. Um, Campbell's Creek, Elsinore, Brado Woods, Lake Caroline, Lake Landor. So we're trying to cover them all. And uh, we hope, I hope that's all that we have to cover. So we're, gonna, we're, we're going to move forward with that and uh, put our, our trust in the county attorney to do the best they can. All right, we'll move to agenda can, item can number seven. Question? Can I ask one more question about the rate increase? In the past, the attorneys have participated to a degree. Are we saying that we are wanting the attorneys to participate as they have in the past? And, and we're I willing think, to pay, pick up that charge? I think that's what we were saying. We were going we to follow mm -hmm. the resolution mm -hmm. first and then get, her, get some kind of idea okay. of what her cost would be. Okay. She testified before yeah. the State Corporation Commission in the past and, and participated in those. So I would think we'd want that same arrangement. Yeah, but you're going to get us an idea of what that costs before we start all that, so we'll know. Because if she says it's going to cost five hundred thousand dollars, we're probably not going to do it. <laughs> you want to give us a ballpark now, or is it, is it still it would in the thirty thousand? Be consistent 000? with whatever we've done in the past. Yeah, I can tell you, past? we could figure out what we did in the yeah, past. Yeah, between five and nine thousand dollars. I'm that neighborhood. There. I thought it was a lot more than that. No, no, it's not for there. 
No, the, the one we, we don't know the cost would be the one where the expert might have to be brought in and, okay. and having to defend uh, and writing the legal brief for the it's surcharge. Just, just to make sure there's not a lot of heartburn, if you could just get us yeah. what you spent in the sure. past and send it to Mr. Cully and he'll send it to the rest of the board so we'll at least know what that, what that time frame is. All right. Number seven is the discussion in response to the RFP for general reassessment of real property. That's you, Mr. Cully? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I just put this on um, in all the other reassessments I had been through in my previous employments. Um, I had board members that were very much interested in, in sitting on the interview committee uh, as we interviewed the firms because uh, reassessment is really the, the function of the board. It's not really a commissioner of revenues function. It's a board of supervisors function. And so they, I didn't know whether you all had any uh, interest of one or two of you uh, sitting in on. We have three firms that uh, have responded to our request for proposals um, to, to try to get a feel for the type of personnel they have and, and how their uh, methodology about going out uh, and, and getting a general reassessment uh, accomplished. Um, and so I'm just offering that uh, to you. If uh, Obviously, we'll interview them if, if not, but if any of you uh, have the time or the inkling to want to want to do that, we, we put that out there for you. The other question we have um, is if you were going to do a board of assessors or just do the required board of legalization. Um, so that that's up to, to, to you. You've always done that, that, right? You always have. I'm just, just making sure you're... That's fine. I'm just... That's the citizen board. That is correct. Basically, basically you appoint a citizen board. So. Correct. So we need to be thinking about that as well. Don't need that yet, but have to be thinking about it. The, the critical path is we need to interview the firms and so we can work toward a contract. When do you expect the... Uh, Selection and the interviews. We'll schedule that in the next several weeks. I mean, the firms have proposed, which is just a matter of we put that on tonight, uh, see if anybody's interested. And if, if we've got one or two members, then we'll find out your schedules. Pam will work toward uh, to getting those set up. Anyone interested in being on the selection committee? I don't know my work schedule right now, but having been here through one, I think it would be hugely advantageous to have somebody on the board actually sitting through this. I just think you open yourself up as a board member uh, to uh, ridicule uh, because I can tell you no one's going to be happy on the assessments, reassessments. Uh, they haven't been in the past. Uh, you know, people just, when you're uh, dealing with their, their taxes, they don't like it. I do not want to serve. I can assure you that. I mean, on the, uh, but we, we, we not on the board, but just no, on the interview. On the, on the, uh, on the interview panel. And, and all, all I would I say to say that is obviously in Middlesex we had numerous controversies around reassessment, and, and uh, I had members that did want to make sure that they interviewed the firm to try to improve uh, that process to make sure they were connected. Just offering, we, we certainly can handle it without you, but didn't want to do it without at least offering. And, and, and board, board members would be able to sit in on any interview you're doing, pretty much you still would have the selection process, but, but if somebody wanted to observe um, the firm we had last go round, because they're one of the bidders, somebody could come and sit in on that. So, okay. All right, so I think we, does anyone, Mr. Taylor, you want to be on the, the interview panel? Mr. Black? Mr. 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 Underwood? Okay, I don't think anybody wants to be on the interview panel formally, um, and we do want to go with the Board of Assessors, which we've done already. So I think that takes care of this. Um, you have to do a board equalization. Yes, and that's kind of the way, that's the way we've done it before. Um, you have to have a board of equalization. You don't have to have a board of assessors, but we did, we did both before. And I guess that'll be our process, so we'll start thinking about appointments we need to make there. Okay. That's direction on seven. Eight is uh, capital projects update. Um, as you can see, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, most of these items are moving along pretty much at the same pace other than the schools are continuing um, as they are paying out for uh, additional work uh, that they're having done on the track. Um, so we've just about spent a million dollars at the high school, uh, 160000 at Madison. Um, most of our other projects are pretty much complete other than the radio system, which we're 63% at this time. What additional work are they doing with the track? Just 
finishing the payment. Just finish paying and okay. paying for it, right? We just we just uh, paid two. Yeah. No, we're not but, changing the color. No, but, just but uh, what, whatever they contracted for. That, that 965 is not what the track calls. No, that's a, that's design. Uh, right. You know, for various design bills. Is the track in there at all yet? Yes, but not all. Not all of it. What was the track? Three hundred thousand. Three twenty nine. Yeah. And we owe, they paid 54000 last night, and they owe another 20 something Okay. All right. Um, and the radio system, we will not complete that project until the spring when we can do a lease test, right? Right. As you can see, we're just now getting leases on some of these towers and still some right. tower sites we don't have leases on yet. Not through anything we've been able to do, just working with the company. Okay. Water tank repaired, blah, blah, blah. And all the rest of those are pretty much just... Okay. Complete. That looks good. Um... The calendar, the only thing I'd remind you is um, we have our uh, Harvest Festival this week. Frog level uh, day is, Fall Festival is the 25th. Um, the 28th at 7 o'clock at uh, RAHCSB's uh, building over across from the high school, we have uh, their annual meeting that they invite us to on that particular Tuesday. And don't forget our next regular meeting is Thursday the 13th of November. Yes, gentlemen, the 11th, our normal meeting day is Veterans Day, so the meeting is going to be on the 13th, also conflicted with VACO. Thursday the 13th, not Friday, Thursday the 13th. Now, that will be a change, so we have to make sure we advertise a lot, because we also had a public hearing for tonight that was canceled because of advertising issues. So we need to make sure we get those in, advertised again, and advertise a lot in a big red flashing banner and whatnot on the web page that the board meeting is on the 13th and not the 11th. <coughs> um, and most of us are invited to the Veterans Day at the 11th with the Caroline Middle School is doing something again. I can't remember that's all. It's outside. I mean, it's not the middle school. Yes, it's the middle. It's the middle school history club at the high school, outside. You don't need to pass to be outside. Um, all right. Well, okay. That takes care of that. Um, then we have another. We have two more closed sessions: uh, prospective business and legal counsel. Three. Yeah. All right. Well, I've got closing board comments. Mr. Taylor, you want to do closing board comments after the sessions? I, th I think we should do closing board comments after the uh, closed session. That's fair. So there may be something to talk about there. Okay. We need another motion to go into closed meeting under section 2.2.3711A. Two, 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 one question. Is that? The 25th. The 25th. Yes. Um, where would you like to move it to? Ah. Monday the 24th? I don't, I don't have a problem. Right. Right. The 2nd of December? Then we'd be meeting on the 2nd. And the ninth. I don't think they'll have enough, everything together on the second and ninth. Let's try the second. Second work most for most of us now. December second. December second. We're gonna, Mr. Cully, we're gonna um, do the scheduling. We would like to move our this, our November twenty fifth meeting to December second. So the, then we're we gonna meet again on the ninth. The second and the ninth. Right. Right. So we may want to pack the second with public hearings. And then the ninth with, without, or the ninth with public hearings. Either way, 
We can do one or the other. So we'll all right. We we'll try to move those two. All right. And now we need a motion to go into both of these. And both of these. A7 is legal matters, and A5 is prospective business, so both of those. Oh, okay. Mr. Underwood, I'm going to need, according to the county attorney, I'm going to need a motion to move our November 25th meeting to December 2nd. So would you make that motion? So move, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motions made by Mr. Underwood, seconded by Mr. Akers, to move our November 25th meeting to December 2nd. That also gives everybody a kind of uh, non-rush before Thanksgiving, but it also puts a little stress on staff to, you could get us the board packets on Monday instead of because you won't be in on Friday because we already approved the governor's vacation schedule or holiday right. schedule, so you're off on Friday. We can get the board packets on Monday. Okay. Um, all, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. The motion carries unanimously. Now we're going to close the meeting under Section 2.237.11A7, Code of Virginia, to discuss specific legal matters related to proper requirements. And we're going into uh, Section 15.237.11A5, Prospective business where no previous announcement has been made. Motion to that effect would be in order. So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Second. Motion made by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Taylor and Mr. Akers. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion carries unanimously. We are in closed meeting. Motion made by Mr. Seeley. Excuse me. Motion made by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Akers. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries unanimously. Mr. Taylor, do you certify that only those things we went into closed session were discussed? I so certify. Mr. Black? I so certify. Mr. Underwood? I so certify. Mr. Akers? I so certify. Mr. Steele? I so certify, Mr. Chairman. And I so certify. Uh, that takes care of it. We had uh, no action out of the... No, we don't have any action out of that. We need to do... Closing board comments. We said we were going to delay those. Mr. Taylor. I have none. Mr. Black. None at this time, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Underwood. No, sir, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Akers. No, sir. Mr. Seeley. No, sir, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Fincham, what? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we were trying to, Charlie, would you figure out, because we were trying to figure out the, the best way to expedite this rezoning at Belmont. Well, I talked to him. That's, it's a planning commission. Uh, Subdivision review. Try. Yeah, subdivision right. review. Yeah, subdivision review. I'll talk to about your planning that. commission member to see if right. they do it at the work session. They don't, they don't normally do things at the work session. They're just doing a sub, subdivision. I'll talk to them. Um, we have one matter we would like to bring. And there was one thing you had to add. Okay. We'd like to uh, have uh, Mr. Sheeble advertise an amendment to the solid waste management plan um, so we can have a public hearing on that uh, December 2nd, the meeting that you all moved. Okay. Uh, we need a motion that effect? Is there a motion that effect? Yes, so moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Underwood makes second. the motion. Mr. Akers makes the second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries unanimously. Um, is that it? Nothing else? Motion to adjourn, please. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Second. 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 Aye. Aye. Um, aye.